What's going on, everybody? I recently got a question um, earlier today, and it's actually something I've gotten a few times. So I figured I'd try and break it down as best as possible, and that's more or less my approach to songwriting. And everybody has a different approach. I mean, um, I'll be the first to admit that my method isn't the most useful it's not necessarily the quickest way but you know it works for me and I don't know it's it's something I've been doing for a little while now so basically I'll start off with you know a guitar sometimes it'll be my acoustic guitar um, sometimes it'll be an electric sometimes I'll be plugged in sometimes I won't like right now I'm not um, if I'm not plugged in and I'm just using like an electric I'll at least have kind of an idea of what sort of sound I would be using. Um, but <clears throat> usually what I'll try to do first is to write an intro that either has you know a cool riff to it or something that is very rhythmic and something that I can add like a melody over later because I really believe that an intro needs to be catchy and it needs to grab your attention quickly um, there's a lot of songs out there that I just kind of gloss over all you know a lot and you know they may be great songs but if I just keep getting like a boring intro or something and, and like a really long buildup I tend to skip it you know if I'm in the car or driving or something and those are the songs that it usually takes me longer to really get into and takes a bit longer for me to appreciate it. Now, that being said, those those types of intros definitely have their purpose and it makes sense when to use them. But, you know, if I'm just writing just a typical song in my style, that's usually what I go for. Um, you know, for example, when I wrote Haste, which was on my first EP, you know, it, it wasn't like a super um, catchy thing, but it was just like a little riff, you know, that can kind of get your attention and kind of show you where it's going to go. You know, it went like this. I think I'm a little out of tune, but you get the idea. Um... So, I usually start from there, and um, then I kind of just wonder where I want it to go. Um, some, sometimes I'll want it to keep that energy up, and sometimes I'll want to bring it back down, you know? Um, it's definitely good to kind of picture where the song could go and where, you know, where it makes sense in your mind to take it. Um, for example, um, on my song, uh, My Fingers Hurt, um, that song starts off with, you know, a, a pretty fast riff, but then, um, after that riff ends, it goes to a pretty slow guitar part, and you know, just a slow, um, section overall for a verse, um, when, um, I have some other songs like, um, Let's see. Um, hmm. Maybe. Um, I am totally blanking right here. Um, <laughs> what would be a good example? Um, let's see. Something like I feel like a big mouse, maybe. Um, you know, it's got kind of different speeds, N not necessarily different tempos, but different like energies to each part. <clears throat> and it kind of keeps that energy going for, you know, a long time. It doesn't really have a lot of downtime. Um, so there, there's different ways to think of it. Um, but basically, I like to try and keep 
keep parts kind of differentiated from each other. You know, like I'll have kind of a riffy intro, but then I'll have maybe a softer verse or maybe just like a less complicated verse and then it goes back into um, like a pre-chorus or a chorus and it has like a really intricate riff or something or maybe just like a, a very interesting rhythm to kind of um, catch you off guard. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat's been a little uh, weird today. Um, but I think, I think you know what I mean. Um, I try to... I try to keep it separated from, you know, the riffy parts to like the melodic parts. And when I when I know that I want to write a melodic part, it usually has more of a simplistic rhythm to it. The uh, the more intricate rhythm stuff is usually kind of the downtime, so you're not just getting bombarded with fast little melodies or you know stuff like that. So usually I'll kind of alternate between um, parts like that and. Um, can see where it goes um and <clears throat> typically I'll, i will just write an entire structure of a song and i won't really have much specifics in mind for melodies um i at least usually don't write the melodies until the entire structure is done i might have an idea of the type of melody i might want but excuse me, I might not actually have anything on paper. So I end up finishing my structure and I, I figure out, you know, this is, you know, 99% down or 100% down. And then usually I'll, I'll record the whole thing, that whole rhythmic part, just the one rhythm guitar, um, maybe bass, but usually not. <clears throat> and then I end up sending... Um, sending that file over to my friend Grant, who up until now has done all of my drums. And sometimes he programs them, sometimes he does some other stuff. Um, but he'll come up with drums to this rhythm um, that makes sense, that accentuates certain parts, that kind of brings a certain feel to other parts. You know, he, he, he does a really great job of bringing the most out of what I've already laid down. And sometimes what he lays down will make me want to tweak other little parts. Maybe I'll um, completely change the guitar part to fit over what he's made in a certain section. Um, and, you know, go from there. Um, but usually that's, that's the case. Like, I'll, I'll write a whole rhythm section, and then I'll send it to him. He'll send me something back. And... <clears throat> From there, I will figure out what I want for a bass part. Um, I usually don't get too complicated when it comes to the bass lines. Sometimes I do. Uh, for example, I was actually playing some of the bass uh, to a couple of my songs this morning. And, um, for example, my song Derelict doesn't really have um, that much going on for the bass. It really just follows... Um, the guitar structure that I already put. I don't really dance around the fretboard much at all. Um, but I felt like if I really was trying to overcomplicate it, it might take away from the songs or it might make too much to listen to. Um, but then in my song Cerulean, um, I'm doing a lot with the bass and I, I really think that um, the absence of like a heavy rhythm guitar and just the openness of the song really lent it lent itself nicely to having a more complicated bass line um, so I figure out where I want my my bass to be and I'll record that at least a rough track maybe maybe a final track um, <clears throat> and from there I will kind of decide how I want the rhythm guitars to be. Sometimes I'll double track, you know, with the same guitar. Sometimes I'll do one track with one guitar, one with another one. So I, like I could do something with my Telecaster here and then maybe my, my Paul Reed Smith to kind of give two contrasting guitars and sounds kind of blending and see where I get. Um, or I could use just the same guitar with different amp tones or something like that, you know, something to kind of make it a little broader, make it feel like there's 
more of that wall of sound, I guess. And then after I've kind of laid that groundwork, that's when I just try and figure out melodies. And sometimes I'll just be noodling over the same part that I just have looping for ever. Sometimes I'll just I'll get a section of like 20 seconds or something and I'll just keep looping it until something comes up. I mean, sometimes I'll spend days trying to figure out what I want. Um, but there's definitely other ways of doing it too. Um, there was a technique that um, I remember hearing a long, long time ago um, from the guitar player of the band Cars, the Cars, um, named Elliot Easton. And most of the lead work that he writes uh, is something that he just kind of like whistles or comes up with his, in his head or he hums. You know, it's not something that he writes on guitar first. You know, it's just something that's very natural for him. He doesn't want his fingers to try and figure it out. He tries to just think of what would sound good first. And that's great because sometimes um, when you're playing it, you're, you get stuck with what you know and... <clears throat> Your hands tend to do the same things that they always do. Um, I'm definitely guilty of that. Um, sometimes if you have like another instrument or something, um, you could even write a solo on that, like compose it on that, and then you know transcribe it to guitar. I, I remember um, there was a song by Paul Gilbert I was reading where he did, <clears throat> he wrote the guitar solo for the song like on kazoo or something. And I think it was on his vibrato album. I don't, I don't quite remember. Um, but then, like, he, he figured out what he wanted to do on kazoo and then just played it on guitar instead. And it was something that he probably never would have come up with on guitar. So, you know, there's definitely different ways of doing it. Um, so I'll, I'll slave over, you know, writing melodies and stuff for a while. Um, usually I will... Um, I'll go from, you know, maybe... Um, like a slow rhythmic, maybe not rhythmic, but like a slow melody. Um, and then I will, um, you know, in the next part, I'll do something more, um, le or I'll, I'll do something less melodic and something a little more, um, not necessarily shreddy, but something that um, has more technique, or, you know, a different type of technique. So, you know, in one part I could be going like but then the next time I could be going like so there's different types of leads and stuff that you could do to kind of break up the monotony a little bit um, that I try to do um, as much as I can to kind of keep things fresh and after I finally figure out what I want for um, for all my lead work, um, at least, you know, the majority of the lead work, then I'll go back and I'll add little harmonies to certain parts, um, maybe just small little sections of just different layers of rhythms uh, to kind of broaden the rhythm sound or to kind of accentuate other parts. And from there, you know, I, I decide where I really want things and then I send it off to be mixed and mastered. So um, that's more or less how I write my stuff. As far as the acoustic songs, I usually write in an open tuning. Um, I wrote my entire last acoustic EP in, all, in an open tuning. It was actually an open E flat. And... When you're when you're playing in an open tuning, it just it lets you do certain things that you couldn't do in a normal tuning. And whenever you want to go back to that open chord, um, it's always a, like a pleasant sound. It's always a reliable chord to go back to, and it lets you utilize a lot of like faster movements, which I really like. And I don't know. I mean, when I write the acoustic stuff, it's usually softer stuff it's usually um a little bit like kind of folky almost but not not really um and i, I kind of do the same thing as 
with the other songs, I'll try to alternate between, you know, like a, a riff and then just like a, a slight rhythm or, you know, a, a strumming pattern or something like that. I kind of try to go back and forth a little bit and um, keep it so you're not just getting either, you know, bombarded with riffs or just bored with just strumming since I'm not singing or anything. Um, but that's, that's basically it um, as far as how I write. Um, I think I covered basically everything. Um, I, I will say, um, on my last album, uh, With Vigor, one of the songs started with drums. Um, I, I went to my friend Grant and I said, hey, write me a drum track, you know, three or four minutes long, um, and let me just kind of work with it and see where it comes. And that was my song uh, called Bad Motivator. And I had a lot of fun writing like that. You know, you really... Um, really can get out of your comfort zone on that one for sure and I actually plan to be doing more of that um, with my next work um, I have a couple of songs I'd already written but I asked Grant to actually send me a couple just straight up drum tracks um, for me to just start from scratch on so that'll be fun um, like I said you know in the beginning of the video there's tons of different ways to write songs there's definitely different ways of finding inspiration and ways of working at your, your, you know, your, your own sort of level, I guess, you know, it's all about just finding what works for you. So, um, if you have any questions at all on my process or anything like that, feel free to let me know. I have no problem, uh, answering questions and, um, hopefully this helped. Um, I don't remember exactly who asked me to do this. I might have the name right here real quick. Um, oh, James Schulfer, Schulfer, uh, however you say it, but, you know, hopefully you enjoyed, and, um, if you got any more suggestions for other videos, feel free to let me know below, and, uh, I'll do what I can. I'll see you guys later.